Exactly how much does the carnivore diet improve SIBO symptoms? In this video, I'm going to break down what a recent study found about the carnivore diet and how it can improve SIBO symptoms. We'll discuss specific symptoms such as bloating, irregular bowel movements, fatigue, and brain fog. Then stick around to the very end because I'm going to give my final thoughts on whether you should consider trying the carnivore diet for SIBO. What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, creator of SIBO Shortcut and the bloating relief supplement Blow Blocker. Let's be honest, SIBO can be a very troublesome condition to treat. And even if you do so effectively, sometimes it can even come back. The main treatments currently for SIBO are antibiotics, antimicrobial herbs, and the elemental diet. While each of these can be effective, they also have their own drawbacks. There's a fourth type of treatment that's been in the conversation for a while, which is the carnivore diet. If you don't know what the carnivore diet is, very briefly, it means that you're just just eating animal-based products and no plant-based products. There is also an emphasis on eating real actual food instead of highly processed food. From past comments I've seen, Reddit threads, and personal experience with clients, I've definitely seen mixed reviews in terms of how well the carnivore diet actually works for SIBO. This video is going to introduce a recent paper that sheds a little bit more light on what the patient experience actually is when doing a carnivore diet for SIBO treatment. And as a quick disclaimer, this video is for informational purposes purposes only and is not medical advice. Okay, so what do we know so far? This 2021 case report titled a zero carbohydrate carnivore diet can normalize hydrogen positive small intestinal bacterial overgrowth lactulose breath test, a case report. Basically in the study, there were six patients that were looked at. They all had hydrogen dominant SIBO, which happened to be very high levels of hydrogen dominant SIBO, most of them over 100 parts per million. And then after they did two to six weeks of a zero carbohydrate carnivore diet. So to make the distinction here, it was a carnivore diet and even more extremes. There are certain foods such as cheese where some of them had a small amount of carbohydrates or lactose in them. These foods were not included in the diet for this study. There was also one patient out of the six that started out with methane. So they had both hydrogen and methane. And then after doing the carnivore diet treatment, this patient also tested negative for methane. While these findings were somewhat interesting, showing that the carnivore diet can reduce the gases on the lactulose breath test after using it for two to six weeks, it still leaves the question, well, what happens in six months? What happens a year from now? Are the patients still negative for SIBO? And what if you add back carbohydrates to the diet? Are you still going to get the results or is SIBO going to come rushing back? Okay, moving ahead to this paper. So this is titled Clinical Outcomes of Patients with SIBO and Adherence to the Carnivore Diet and Analysis from a Functional Medicine Perspective. This paper looked at 40 patients, 27 of them had SIBO and 13 of them did not. 85% of these patients followed a strict carnivore diet, but I do want to make the distinction that this was not considered a zero carbohydrate carnivore diet like the first study that I talked about. 44% of people reported doing this diet for two months or longer, while 56% of patients reported doing the diet for under two months. The main side effects are listed here. So about 30% of people started with diarrhea, 33% with abdominal distension, 25% with constipation, 17% with nausea, 50% with bloating, and then 25% of them actually had no gastrointestinal problems before the carnivore diet. Moving into the results, you can see here that about 47% of people reported fewer gastrointestinal problems, and then it also measured some non-GI stuff like blood sugar. 25% of people had lower, 43% noted a weight improvement. I'm assuming this is weight loss. 47% less tired, 38% of people had less brain fog. And then at the very end, it noted that 65% of people would recommend this to others based on the experience that they had. 30% of people would recommend carnivore diet, but perhaps with certain reservations. And then 5% of people said, no, absolutely not. Sounds like they had an absolutely terrible time. Maybe they didn't have enough variety of food. I don't know. So what does this study tell us? One takeaway for me is that it seems like for the majority of people using the carnivore diet can help you feel better relatively quickly after starting it if you have SIBO. You may also experience improvements in weight. This is assuming that you want to lose weight, not gain weight. Improvements in blood sugar and even brain fog. It seems like there are some adherence concerns. As I mentioned, the types of food that you can eat is pretty narrow. So especially starting it, this can be particularly difficult for some people. But overall, it seems like most people really tend to like it. And I'm assuming this is because they're probably feeling quite a bit better. Okay, what this study now does not tell us. As I mentioned in the first study, how we don't have that long-term data following patients to see if they're going to be free from SIBO long-term. This study does not do this either, unfortunately. So we don't know breath test results after doing this carnivore diet. We don't know which types of SIBO 
placebo were included and what the breakdown was in this particular paper. We don't have that long-term follow-up to see how people were doing six months a year in the future. And then there was self-reported adherence in terms of what patients were eating. So I'm a pretty trusting person. I'd love to be able to trust what everyone's saying that they ate. Is it necessarily true? Who knows? But obviously worth mentioning. Finally, my personal take on the diet and what I've seen with clients and what I've heard from other practitioners who are doing the carnivore diet for their patients. There certainly can be some lifestyle challenges, whether it be with family, friends, social occasions. After all, most restaurants aren't exactly tailored to somebody eating this kind of diet. Side effects are possible when adapting to the carnivore diet at first. If you think about it, if we're cutting off all the carbs or almost all the carbs, something has to replace all those calories that you're not getting from carbs. So for most people, this means you're going to be ingesting quite a bit more fat into your diet and making this switch, your body may not really like it at first. So some people have some abdominal distress. Some people have some loose stools, especially when starting, but oftentimes this goes away after a short period of time. I think the carnivore diet and results, how people like it really depends on the person. I think some of our bodies just do better on this higher protein, higher fat diet, whereas other people may try to do the carnivore diet and have an absolutely miserable experience on it. I will say that doing the carnivore diet, you're eating basically all really high quality foods. So this might be steak, chicken, eggs, high quality cheeses. If you're doing this, you've essentially cut out pretty much all highly processed foods. So doing this alone can help a lot of people feel better. I've seen the carnivore diet work really well for hydrogen dominant SIBO and even for some people with methane SIBO, also known as intestinal methanogen overgrowth. I haven't really seen this done for hydrogen sulfide SIBO, so I can't weigh in on that. A carnivore diet also tends to be pretty high in sulfur because you're going to be eating so much meat with it. So for this reason, I'm not sure if it would be the best way to go, but if you've used it for hydrogen sulfide SIBO, I'd love to know down in the comments below what your experience was with this. Last comment I'd like to make, as I mentioned, the long-term efficacy of doing a carnivore diet, especially if you stop carnivore and go back to, I guess, a more normal diet with carbs, fiber in it. What exactly happens with SIBO? So what I would love to see is a research study done with carnivore diet for SIBO, all three types, where patients do the initial breath test, then they do carnivore diet for a specified period of time, whether it be the exact zero carb carnivore diet or just a regular carnivore carnivore diet, then do another test after those weeks with carnivore diet, see what the results were, have those patients go back to eating a diet with carbohydrates with fiber, and then follow up with them again down the road and see were they able to maintain the progress if they made progress with the carnivore diet, or did they have a relapse of SIBO? So that is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more related content. If you've used the carnivore diet before, please let us know down in the comments why you started the diet, how well it's worked for you, and how long you've been doing the diet for. I'd be particularly curious to hear if anyone's been doing carnivore diet for a really long period of time, such as five years or more. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.